occurs to me, I'm having a very bad hair day today. I don't know what all this is going on. Um, but I'm as camera ready as I will ever be. Um, Hello everyone at Chorleywood Primary School, my name is Toby Page and I am an artist, um, more specifically I am an illustrator, which is really just a fancy term for artist as far as I'm concerned. Um, I do artwork for loads of different things, so when you open up a magazine you might see an illustration, just an artwork in it that somebody's painted, or you, you, you would see illustration on CD covers or on billboards when you're walking down the street, really for anything, posters, all of that stuff. So when I was in school, I used to use, I used to use a, a canvas or a piece of paper and paints and oil pastels, crayons, ink, anything I could get my hands on, um, to, to get my hands messy really. Um, and that's what we would call traditional artwork. Um, whereas now, I'm a, a digital illustrator, which means I do all of that same stuff, but I do it on something called a Wacom tablet, which as best as I can explain is like a very large iPad. And I use one of these things, which is essentially just a plastic pen, it's just a plastic pen with a couple of buttons on it. And so I use this and I'm able to, to, to write on the screen and to paint on the screen in exactly the same way that you would do on a piece of paper or with a paintbrush on a canvas. Um, and I can make it look, I'll, I'll, I'll do a demo later on so that you can you can see, see what I mean. But I'm able to make it look like pencil if I want to, or to make it look like watercolour or, or, or whatever. Um, the sky is really the limit. And I think the best thing about being a digital illustrator is the fact that when I was in school, I was very clumsy, so if I was painting on a canvas, I would definitely be the person to spill black ink or black paint all over it, and I would ruin it for um, And so I um, I think it's really, really, ch it's definitely changed the way I work. When I was a traditional artist, things used to take a lot longer, and as fun as it still is, um, it, yeah, it just used to take a really long time. Like I said, I'm going to show you a demo so you can see an example of, of what I do on my Wacom tablet. And also, I think now more than ever, we're all craving some outside time. Um, and so I've been dreaming of the outside world and I've been doing a lot of paintings recently of clouds and skies because the weather's been beautiful recently. And I've been painting a lot of starry night skies, some lovely pink sunset skies, and I think that would be, it would be good to show you guys that. So let's get started. So this program I use is called Photoshop. It's where I do all of my painting. There's loads of programs like it, but I would say Photoshop is probably the most popular. So I'm just gonna make a new canvas now, and I'm gonna put a blue background on, just a simple blue background. And this is where I'm gonna show you what you can do with all these different types of brushes. So I've selected white. This is the color picker where you're able to pick up any color and I select a brush, as you can see all my brushes there, and I just go away and I write and I paint. As you can see, this paintbrush is a bit more textured, so it has, it resembles quite a lot like a uh, paintbrush does. And I'm just going to show you now what happens when I press heavily, there's a lot of colour, and when I press lightly, there's not a lot of colour. So it works exactly like it would with a paintbrush with pressure, it's able to know when I'm pressing hard on the pen and when I'm pressing lightly. So I'm just going to show you exactly how it paints like acrylic paint. When the two colours go together you can see it smudges exactly like it would with paint and you get a really lovely colour. Okay so now I'm just going to show you a couple of examples of the brushes that I use the most. This one I like is just a very very nice clean black marker effect and it just comes out very nice and clean as if you're using a big black marker or felt tip or something like that. Like I said these are only a few options, these are only the brushes that I use the most. This one I believe is the oils, so you can tell again if I press harder it's, it's darker and if I loosen my grip 
it's a little bit lighter. So that one's with oil. This one is just a simple black pencil, and I use this a lot when I'm just sketching out an idea. And you have loads of other options. For example, I don't use this a lot, but this is supposed to look like pastel. So you have almost like loads of little dots that make it look like it's, it's, it's very textured. So I don't usually use this a lot, but this is just one example. These are just a few examples of the kind of brushes that you can use within Photoshop and how it looks exactly like pencil, marker, oil paints, acrylics. Now this next example is probably the brush that I use the most and it's the acrylic paint pen. You can change settings on this to add more wetness to your brush if you want it to not be as harsh. Um, on this one you can tell that it's, uh, it resembles a brush stroke very very much and again the harder I press down the darker it gets. But this one I can make it look like dry strokes or I can make it look wet. As you can see, I don't know if you can tell, but you can see that it's a slightly bit more wet on the brush as I start writing. So that's a very short demo over with. I think now let's just get to painting, shall we? So I'm just going to select like a nice blue colour, a nice light blue colour, similar to what it's like outside right now. And I'm going to select the wet acrylic brush. And I'm just going to get some painting some clouds. And usually I would have a reference photograph, so usually I'd have a photograph of clouds right next to me on a different monitor so I can see how clouds behave and how clouds look. But for this, I'm simply just going to imagine clouds in my head and how they look and how they behave and I'm just going to get painting. Well, there's loads of different settings and controls for this. I'm able to add more water to the brush to make it look a little bit more wet and to mix the paints a bit more but right now I'm fine as to what the settings look like right now and here I'm just adding white to the canvas and just adding a little bit more blue to mix it all in together as you can see it's so easy for me and it really 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 is very very simple the way that the brush behaves makes it mix so well and makes it really resemble fluffy clouds. And I thought it would be nice just to show you my favourite kind of clouds, which are the clouds that come up usually on a sunset. And you get these lovely pink clouds. And I'm just changing from light to dark pinks and oranges. And I'm just fluff fluffing them out to create a bit more of a cloud texture. And clouds are never one flat colour, they always have a little bit of shadow underneath and around. And clouds are always different, clouds ne you never see the same cloud. Clouds are always so different, they always spread, they always change form and they always change shape. And that's why I think it's really interesting when you paint them, because you can never really go wrong. So I thought I'd do a night sky for you because they're always most fun. You're going to add stars and a moon and that's what I'm going to do for you right now. So I just start with putting a dark blue background and then I add light, a lighter blue to make these fluffy clouds. Right now I'm just making the basic shape of a cloud and I'm just fluffing it out again to give it a little bit more texture and mixing the colours. And then I use a slightly darker colour underneath just to mix it. And as you can see, it's already resembling a cloud. And so I decided later on that I was going to add a moon, so I needed to add some light coming from the moon top of the cloud.
I'm just filling this cloud out a bit more just to give it a little bit more shape and adding slightly different colours. Sometimes clouds get very, very wispy and there's not much to them. So I'm just adding a very, very wispy, tiny cloud next to it. And again, adding some more dark underneath it just so it doesn't all look like one flat color. Just blending it out as if you would with any traditional paint. And then I decided to add a little moon. Okay, so it's not perfectly round, but for this it's absolutely fine. And just adding a little bit more light for the moonlight. Blending it in with slightly darker colours just to make it look a little bit more natural. And then with any moon, you need some lovely moonlight. So I just want to add a little bit of a glow around the moon to make it look just that little bit more realistic. I'm using a soft brush to do this. And as you can tell, it makes such a lot of difference to the sky. And then one of my favorite bits, I'm just going to use a very fine brush to add some very fine stars. Okay, so I'm just going to spread them out throughout the canvas and I'm just gonna put them here and there, just anywhere I feel like. And some stars are bigger than others, so there's some size variation, so some are small and some are a lot bigger. I'm just gonna give it a little outer glow to some of the stars to give it that much more of a magical touch to this night, starry night sky scene. And there you have it, it's as simple as that. I used two brushes to create this painting. So I painted this sunset scene last night of these lovely pink dreamy clouds. And I loved doing this piece. It only took me about 30 minutes to do. And it was really, really fun. Um, so I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you gained something from it, even if it was just to be a little bit inspired. Um, I really enjoyed doing this for you guys and Remember to wash your hands, stay safe, and stay at home. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Let's run through these questions. What did I have for breakfast this morning? I had granola. I had a yogurt and two coffees because I was very, very, very tired this morning. Um, what was my favourite book as a child? My favourite book... The one that I remember my being the first book that my mum read, read me was Hans Christian Andersen, The Little Mermaid, which is obviously now a very famous Disney film that we all know and love. Um, but yes, I used to love anything to do with the ocean or the sea. I was, I just loved it. Um, when you were at primary school, when did you? Well, sorry, what did you want to be when you grew up? Honestly, I didn't know, and I think that's okay. I knew that I wanted to be creative, and luckily enough, I was born into a very, very, very heavily creative family. Um, so in my family, we have musicians, singers, we have piano players, and artists, and I was one of the artists. And my art side comes from my mum, and the music side comes from my dad's side. Um, and yeah, so I knew that I was going to be an artist because it's all I love doing in school. I would paint, I would paint, I would paint on the walls and drive my mum crazy. Um, favourite part of my job is, is not knowing where it's going to take you. I, you know, I lived in 
I lived in America for three months working for a famous singer and YouTube star called Todrick Hall. And just by the click of a button, I'm able to upload my artwork for the whole world to see on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and things like that. And so I've had Rihanna, the, the one and only Rihanna. I've spoke to her a few times. We used to message each other quite a lot. Um, so that's really weird. Um, and Beyonce's liked my artwork because somebody she worked for followed me on Instagram and showed her my work. Anybody can see what you do. And it's a little bit scary as well at the same time, but I'm just from, I'm a very country bumpkin from a very, very quiet village. And um, the internet allows for your work to be seen by everyone. And it, it, makes, uh, it makes it so much easier for your work to be shared as well. So that's really cool. Um, one piece of advice you would share with your younger self, chill out. Everything's gonna be absolutely fine. Everything's gonna be absolutely fine, and it will be. Um, yeah, I think that would be the main advice. I was such a worrisome child, and I still, you know, everyone still worries, but um, yeah, I was very shy. I was very shy as well. So I would just say to chill out, everything's gonna be fine. Um, what do you know about Charlie Wood and have you ever been? No, I only know that my lovely um, bosses at work, because by day I'm, I'm, a, I'm a designer for Anna and Corin, a company called The Online Studio, whose lovely kids go to this school. Um, and they, it actually occurs to me that they've never invited me around for dinner, so I shall definitely be having words with them. Um,